a very good morning and good evening to everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into today's Signet Infotech webinar. I am Vedhi Parve, your host for this one-hour session on automating instant test cases. I hope everybody is able to hear me. If yes, or if there are any glitches, can you please help me clear my thoughts on in the chat section? All right, we have responses coming in. Let's go forward. At any given point, if you have any questions or you are unable to see or hear the speakers, please let us know in the same chat window at the bottom right side of your dialog box and you can insert your queries. I would also like to tell you all that we do have a dedicated 15 minute Q&A session where you can directly address your queries to the speakers at the end of the webinar. Let's get started. All right, we have many, many responses that we are you are able to hear us. Thank you so much for that. As we all know, organizations across the globe are getting competitive with each passing day. There exists a lot of pressure that creates a trickle down effect across the end to end chain of software product engineering. That is from the requirement gathering to managing the QA teams. Today in this webinar, we will address the challenges on in-sprint automation, test case migration, codeless automation, manual and regression, regression testing, and many more challenges that a QA team faces as they are asked to match up with the speed of the development. Today, we have two industry experts who will enlighten us on the topic and the challenges that I just mentioned. Please join me in welcoming Tushar Das, an innovative and result-oriented technology evangelist who comes with 20 plus years of experience in global delivery and software development programs. He has extensive knowledge of next generation digital technologies with subject matter expertise in IoT, intelligent automation and quality engineering initiatives. Welcome on board Tushar. It's a pleasure to have you today. So, okay, thanks a lot really. You know, like it's a great opportunity, especially the topics and this particular overall, this, this, uh, I'm really excited. So looking forward, and there are so many participants. I think we can make it exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tushar. Next, we have a second speaker, Balbo Jha, who is an expert of functional, manual, and automation testing with specialization in managing complex digitization and automation transformation. Welcome to the webinar, both of you. You can now take the stage ahead. Thank you, Vedi, for that beautiful introduction. Indeed, it's a pleasure to host Tushar uh, for this beautiful in-sprint topic of in-sprint automation. Uh, so uh, getting started, uh, Tushar. So me and Tushar were sitting today uh, morning discussing about what we should present in this webinar or what should we talk about where are we and uh, where should be in, in sprint automation, right? So we came up with this particular slide uh, talking about this is very basic. Like for example, if I have to draw and uh, demonstrate people that where we are exactly in, in the current situation, for example, uh, currently we are here talking about uh, existing flow of test automation, which is nothing but creating manual test cases first, and then going ahead with the execution of manual test cases. Simultaneously, there is another team going on, which talks about automation, um, uh, which learns automation, learns about the technology. For example, he, if he needs to code, uh, automate something, he needs to um, write code in Java, .NET, um, PHP, Python, Perl, Ruby, etc. So there is an additional, um, effort that he needs to make or and and if you talk about the project wise or let's say organization wise this is an additional resource that gets added into the team simultaneously manual tester has to impart the knowledge of the application that he, he tries to test that so there is a multi-layer of people who who are testing manually as well as automation automating those test cases which was created by manual testers so if you see there's a multi-dimensional things are happening at the same time. There is a script development. There is understanding of the 
IDE, understanding of Java, in the understanding of the application, all of these takes toll on the people and the project. And then after the script is developed, uh, it goes into N plus one script. This means that obviously when, when um, automation scripts which has been developed, when it is made to be deployable, it is it is far more behind than what it is actually the project is going on or let's say the manual testers are creating test cases for. So there is a backlog of the test cases that has been created or let's say backlog of manual test cases that are available ready to create automation there. So I feel there is some sort of uh, lagging mechanism here, right? Tushar, do you think this is something which is a problem uh, that we need to solve and this is obviously this is something which we need to uh, focus on going forward. What are your thoughts on this? No, you are, you are spot on, you know, like, uh, but yes, one thing I'll say they tell because as we have got so many people from different kind of organizations, different uh, maturity level, okay, different experience and all this, some people say, no, 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 we, my, we have automation as part of the sprint already. So when we say no automated functional execution, we still say, either no or it's limited automation. So when we try to talk Correct. about automation, we definitely feel that, okay, there should be maximum coverage of the automation side. Okay, there mm -hmm. should be, but it's definitely, even if we talk about quality engineering concepts and all this, where the people say that, okay, people need to know technology, coding and all this. So even if you bring in a quality engineer, but still those processes, if you see on the second part of this <clears throat> presentation, what we are trying to achieve, we are doing the testing. It should be an integration of automation and manual together. It should have a complete regression the set of uh, regression test cases moment we move into N plus one. And on the right hand side below, if you see this avoid duplication, that's what we need to do. Start autom automation yes. early. We all want to do that. Better coverage is definitely one of the expectation than helping and in continuous testing. So this concept of continuous testing, continuous regression. Okay, so those things and iterative model and all this, those are the expectations. But in different level, if you see your right, we are nowhere near to our expectation level. Some people has got some portion of that, but there are majority of the, the in fact, uh, programs which are nowhere near to this. Wonderful. <clears throat> Perfect. That sets the stage. Thanks to Shar for that brief info or let's say brief information about what we discussed and what we are going to discuss the challenges and uh, solutions that we are going to talk about in this webinar. Um, to the audience, there should be a poll coming in on your screens so that uh, we take some feedback going forward about the demonstration that we are going to discuss around. So you should have, you should see the screen, uh, polls on your screens now. And once that is done, we'll wait for a couple of uh, 30 seconds around and then we will move forward. Perfect. All right. So moving on. So there's this next poll that has come up on your screen, which talks about, have you tried in sprint test automation? We can uh, still wait for more 30 seconds and provide your feedback there. We will be happy to share this feedback to our audience and what they think about in sprint automation journey. Wonderful. So, Tushar, um, the, here's a question for you. Uh, what do you think? Uh, you, I, I believe you have a great set of experience in testing as well as in terms of project management. I, I see that uh, you have a widely industry knowledge about how to implement test automation and how to successfully deliver projects out of out, out in the market. 
So what do you think, what could be the challenges or what are the challenges specifically in implementing the test automation as a project manager in, in any of your project that you may have uh, sure. featured upon? Okay, let me try because <clears throat> when I start talking about the challenges, the list is so huge, you know, I'll try to <laughs> make it in a, in a concise way. Like I, I will take those challenges into three different areas, definitely mm -hmm. for in sprint agile testing and agile test automation we have got a shorter test cycle first challenge is that mm -hmm. very short mm -hmm. test cycle now next mm -hmm. one is a huge expectation huge set of ex expectations the third Absolutely. one is multi-level complexities so shorter test cycle let me talk about that when in practice or in theory normally if you see the each iterations are normally two weeks in in one sprint when mm -hmm. we do the testing Theoretically, the development and testing happens simultaneously. The automation happens in parallel. Some also comment mm -hmm. that automate everything. But at by whatever you do, you do, by the end of the second week, the sprint is done. The next sprint starts at the same process goes on and everything seems to be hunky-dory. Okay, everything goes well. That's right. what the expectation is. Right. But in right. reality, if you see in majority of the scenarios, when the sprint starts, the test team and all this, if you, if you, I should not say test team, development team, a lot of people say, no, it's a sprint team. Yes, fine. But the activities which happens, everybody looks into the requirement and development starts writing the code. And in reality, if you see a testable code for testing to happen, it comes maybe onto the, if it is very good, then it's third to the fourth day. Sometime I have seen where there's so many of my clients, they normally get the code to the, deploy the code for the, the testers to test which is around the first day of the second week. So whatever we take around five days to seven days is the uh, period. Within that, what the people has to do, they have to do testing, they have to do uh, their defect management, filing, closing, verification of those defects. They also have to do some kind of regression. And along with that, if you see, they also have to finish up all these things within this five to seven days. The next I will talk about the expectation. And when we talk about mm -hmm. testing in Agile, there are certain expectations which definition wise very good, but it says like, okay, continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous regression, but all those are additional expectation within that seven days period. You can imagine like, okay, you are, you are just putting another layer of uh, challenges on top of that. Then the third thing, okay, I would like to tell about that complexity. So. If you see uh, overall, even if you uh, take that on the complexity aspect from N plus one iterations, if we take the size of backlog increases, regression scope, scope and the regression pressure increases. So whenever uh, over the time of our N plus two, N plus three iteration, when we reach in, we found out even if every iteration has got maybe 10 requirements, but those mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the 10 requirements, there is backlog of another 20 defects, 20 the different integration components which has to be tested. There are multiple regression which has to be done. Everything, a continuous regression process has to be defined. So those are the things, you know, like which makes it every uh, possible step, it make, makes it more uh, complex. And uh, what if you now talk specifically about uh, automation in the, within that sprint on top of everything, the team is also expected to develop automation script so that the automation mm -hmm. execution can happen and the automated test yeah. coverage increases over the time. So all these things together makes it very complex. We'll talk about it, but yes, this is, I, I could summarize it this way, over to you. Absolutely, I, I see this as, uh, I've been part of one couple of projects like this, and uh, I believe traditional um, expectations of setting up automation, uh, doing manual testing, as well as everything in the sprint can be uh very challenging that's so that opens up one of the poll there uh, which okay. talks about what is the biggest challenge that you might have faced while organize in the or in your organization implementing the test automation so we'll be having uh 30 seconds of pause here so that everyone would be able to uh give the feedback there this is very engaging and I, I, I believe uh this is definitely going to help each and every one of you so that um after this webinar, you'll be able to gain more confidence on the automation as well as how to approach them and uh, come out winning there. So, wonderful.
right so i'm looking at the poll waiting a couple of seconds more yes um so yes so tushar we, we talked about all of these uh, challenges right so i believe uh, these are the same challenges which are going to come uh, which has been happening from the traditional methodology of project management and this should this would continue going forward as a tester there would be certain challenges and as a project manager there would be certain challenges as well but uh, i feel agile is great like uh, agile is something which is very uh, uh, beautiful and this is something which is going to help everyone now how would you solve this problem this is something which is uh, if you talk about uh, traditional methodology of selenium the traditional methodology of code based tools this is something which is going to prevail in in a longer run uh, so from my perspective codeless is the uh, solution that we should talk about your thoughts on this see yes what you said um, okay I'm, i'll come to that codeless but yes definitely this is one of the my most favorite uh, what you can say like topic you just uh, triggered on but i will tell uh, to resolution will come into three areas one is process mm -hmm. the next one is people and the third one is the technology so if you see Wonderful. why i'm telling people process and technology because the solution lies there and when we talk about codeless definitely that's the mm -hmm. technology enabler and also it is mm -hmm. it is one of the side i would like to touch upon right now that okay this is also the people enabler because every time people say is that okay in the today's world testing is just changed we are bringing in quality engineers which is absolutely right and it doesn't mean that a tester need to do automation that's the expectation and codeless definitely can help that person or enable that person to make it much more easier why codeless because there are whether you say codeless or no code either you mm -hmm. can build up automation scripts with simple english language for an example what i have seen like it can say that okay login is a simple english language that's what the test case can be that's where you don't really need to uh, what i understand from normally codeless and all these things you really don't have to do another test case manual test case to write one test case solve both the purpose when you write a test Absolutely. case that also can be automated next thing is when we talk about it when we talk about sing, simple english language we talk in a language automation or the scripting also will be happening on, onto the same language if we go to a uh, no code there can be visual uh, the in fact programming where you can simply clear the drag and drop certain functionalities bring the functionalities together stitch it together one test case is automated so definitely this is going to change and what i always say that uh, when we say codeless mm -hmm. it is not only a simple technology when we it's in today's digital revolution digital uh, transformation without codeless it's very difficult to move forward to make it faster because within this uh, the codeless technology we are bring, bring, bringing in the technologies of rpa involving rpa mm -hmm. onto the test automation you cannot imagine like how fast and effective our report testing our pdf report you have to test that in selenium you might have to write multiple lines of code in a codeless mm -hmm. it's a five minutes job so what we need is like something if we have to start the testing now you write the, the, the test case and by the afternoon you should have five test cases which are automated you are executing you don't have time to wait so codeless definitely let's take forward absolutely i i, I believe in that and i uh, proudly echo your um, uh, thoughts there tushar and i believe that uh, even if the codeless automation solution that allows you to write test cases quickly i believe it should have a different set of uh, integrations for example if i have to uh, write an api test case it should have that uh, methodology where i would be able to create an end to end test case as well as some sort of mechanism where if i if any of my project teams or any of my project uh, members have already written some sort of selenium scripts or uh, they want to move in from the manual uh, portion of testing they should be able to uh, seamlessly come or let's say get onboarded onto the platform so that's that's my per perfect mm -hmm. automation or let's say codeless solution that i could talk about as well as uh, in the long run i should i should believe that it should also uh, give some sort of uh, 
reusability component so that uh, even if maintenance is a, a pain it should uh, do my job in in minimum steps or so hmm. absolutely yeah. this this sets this sets the tone and uh, i also believe this is the traditional uh, apart from this uh, completely uh, i mean all of these things can be put in into the uh, what what we say the traditional automation project methodology as well also this is as in when the entire world is moving on the agile teams nowadays 80 to 90% of the entire uh, software systems run on agile methodology sort of uh, uh, implementation of their projects right so um, i believe agile is something which is uh, good in terms of project management in terms of uh, good in in to the product owners or let's say project managers but i also believe this is going to uh, be putting more pressure on the qa resources when especially when you talk about delivering the expectations delivering the uh, uh, testing the entire flow understanding the uh, requirements testing the entire flow automating it and then giving a sign off so this could be a roadblock in terms of time management and what is the definition of finish definition of done i would say so this is Absolutely. something which is very crucial what are your thoughts over here See, uh, as i was talking about people process technology so technology as you said codeless yeah. can be an option but why i am telling codeless as an option because i have seen projects where some of even in south africa even in us where mature organizations say when you bring in the quality engineering perspective on the ship left to ship right entire thing so mm -hmm. people knows how to code and they write code but just imagine you are writing a set of code to test another set of code so who, <laughs> nobody thought things like okay the right of come right when you're writing a complex set of code just in the name of script who will review that who will test that and in addition to that when people say automate everything it's very good mm -hmm. to say but automate and everything automate everything i'm normally seeing that they do their unit test cases automated but when you take the unit test cases automated it's just one of the layer on top of that mm -hmm. you have got service mm -hmm. layer on the service layer you have got you may have to have apis which you have to test you have got multiple other areas you have to connect to the database there are multiple integration components there can be functional components everything which you cannot automate writing simple code so fast then on top of that mm -hmm. if you bring it onto, onto the third uh, upper layer there is a ui component onto the ui component mm -hmm. i i should not only say that it's just simply testing the ui in today's complex world you have to test the ui into different platforms different channels so all these things you know i personally feel whatever on, onto the this side i have seen one thing i would like to say today which uh, sometime i think it, it might not be very popular saying that but you know, uh, you know like i'll just tell you where i'm coming from we are trying to solve certain things in a very complex way what is required is a mindset change why we should mm -hmm. not over complicate solution what is a simple possible objective of testing let's think about it the application needs to be tested so a quality engineer or a test engineer team should be able to test the system ensure quality mm -hmm. executing test cases now the testing right. can be done in manual mode or on automated mode using scripts or it can be both Correct. then Correct. who should do it it's a very simple question who should do it a test engineer who is a test engineer who knows domain who knows application who understands yeah. protocol or the protocols and everything testing processes testing techniques software architecture mm -hmm. and overall the person who should be in a position to test end to end file defects understand how uh, the system is performing it's a specific skill knowing how to code or write script let me repeat that again because this is one of the thing where i just really feel and i'm telling it to my customer because that it's a specific skill and knowing how to code or write scripts doesn't make a person qualified tester hence an individual or a developer knowing how to code doesn't make him a professional test editor or quality engineer remember automation is an enabler where we always mm -hmm. make a mistake that we say it is a type of testing no we are doing unit testing functional testing integration regression whatever you talk, talk about it's a type of testing but in the in this industry you have some wrong concepts and statements a lot of people just say automation testing what is it 
let me clarify there is nothing called automation testing you are not testing automation but you are testing applications using automated scripts so it's called test automation this concept Wonderful. itself automation testing making everything uh, on a different dimension so when it's test automation our goal is to verify application finding defects ensuring quality the, the is our main goal or purpose but not running a script which actually doesn't produce defects let me put forward a very strong thought here a separate set of people just doing automation is a process over it which never provides the results and desired outcome i have not seen a, a simple and set of automation testers producing defects or ensuring the quality of the product yes they make it faster so who says that we need to have another person coming in who can write another set of code to test a set of code if that's the way let the tester do it so how should they do it is basically enabling those testers to automate so you are testing quality your speed roi effectiveness will enhance multifold moment you make that tester should be able to automate and how they should be able to automate there should be some kind of technology which enables them and codeless can be a way forward over to you very very interesting very interesting and a very crucial point to share and i applaud you for that this is something which is uh, nowadays nowadays every nowadays what say uh, this is uh, traditionally every person thinks in a way where uh, automation testers are a different team than a manual testing team so this is oh. something which needs to which needs to collaborate together or let's say uh, as a industry uh, automation industry we should be empowering manual testers so that they should be they should be able to write test cases uh, i would say write automation test cases in a in a perspective where uh, they have the knowledge they have the uh, automation uh, they have the tools to they have the right tools to automate something they have uh, the entire product knowledge entire application knowledge as well as the domain knowledge which will eventually help them to create better automation test cases uh, what i have seen over a period of time is that while we are automating or let's say when when a, when i go to a particular automation tester that particular tester is uh, fighting with the technology rather than creating test cases effectively so i have seen a lot of time there what are, exactly. what are your thoughts on empowering some someone like a manual yes. tester when empowering thing comes in you know the concept of quality engineering has come in, the qe okay so basically Absolutely. what we are thinking transform your tester into qe and that's where people are bringing in from the opposite side they are telling okay a good developer will become a qe no a good developer will also add value okay because they know code they know architecture better okay and when they come in along and if they learn testing along with that they become a faster they the faster they can transform into quality engineer so that's the transformation on the other side you have experienced testers who understands domain who understands application for a network testing and all this who understand network protocol for a for a digital mm -hmm. application or ai and ml they, they understand all the mi in fact the technologies those are the people who knows technology they can become great tester just enable them so that they can automate so when we talk about quality engineering and everything that's how the organization should be able to achieve that but i will definitely look forward to you uh, when i'm talking about enabling expert testers to become an automator also using uh, this what is that codeless uh, tools and technologies please help me out that wonderful. how it, you can achieve that wonderful this this is something which we can enable people to start writing test cases via codeless tools or let's say any approach that would help them to write less codes so this is where we should be heading forward but one more challenge there tushar the challenge is in a long run how do you feel uh, what do you feel like this is something uh, when when we say as in when agile is moving ahead agile is growing ahead um, every after every sprint uh, let's say there is a new version what are the chances or what let's say what are the complexities are involved in maintaining those test cases true very true because you know like ultimately if you see in agile we have in an agile environment when we talk about a lean process we have to have mm -hmm. test cases are also very modular mm -hmm. and it's 
uh, used for iterative testing. You know, like you need to, as I told you, bits and pieces you join together and create an end-to-end -end test cases. So mm -hmm. in this particular thing, uh, if you use a proper tool and if the tool has got those kind of intelligence, okay, it can always help that how we can get a better ROI, how the maintenance is, is easier okay how mm -hmm. uh, the test cases automated test cases we have created on to suppose the second iteration how that can be called in into the fourth or the fifth iteration while creating a test case so how we can make that uh, how we can manage the entire modular system the small small components of um, to, onto those things unless and until we have got a solid system which can track those things make it maintainable it will be very difficult so do you think that uh, the current world whatever we are seeing onto the this codeless kind of platforms. How easy is it to maintain? Yes, absolutely. So when we talk about a codeless approach, there could be situations like, um, uh, let's say I have personally, I am personally using some of these tools. Like they they have beautiful uh, UI to create test cases out of um, codeless keywords that they can drag and drop, or let's say uh, utilize some record uh, inbuilt recording functions these types of recording functions are getting day by day better in terms of how you identify those uh, web elements on the website as well as how you create test cases end-to-end -end test cases in a single flow so this is something which is very useful when you are creating the test case when you talk about uh, integration integration in the sense that um, uh, as a tester we, we we deal with a lot of tools apart from just testing so let's say if i talk about executing your test cases on multiple browsers somehow the my client would come up to me and say that uh, i need the execution results on version chrome browser bro chrome browser 87th version so hmm. i don't have that specific browser version in my system neither do i have the uh, uh, let's say neither my company wants to spend on the additional infrastructure so what is the option for me so from my perspective, all of these tools should be able to uh, integrate somehow with the third party cloud browser providers like Sauce Labs, mm -hmm. um, um, let's say Browser Stack, Lambda Test, et cetera. All of these tools provide you enable, or let's say enable you to uh, write test cases, execute them on multiple browsers and get the results back. There's, well, there's one more problem that it should solve is through the version controlling system. Any tester would like to uh, implement something he should be or let's say project manager or the test lead should be able to track who has made what changes into the main test case file so that is completely uh, i mean whatever key uh, keyword driven framework that we are talking about should be able to integrate with all of these third party tools that every uh, or let's say ecosystem for third party tools that every tester interacts with in in daily basis i also feel just like uh, we discussed about uh, managing everything uh, in in a centrally managed server, or let's say in 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 a central location, which eventually help you to maintain those test cases efficiently. Whenever there's a change in one place, you should be, or let's say a tester should be able to change at one place, and um, with maximum impact, it should go ahead with uh, affecting every test cases where it has been referenced. Oh. So I believe oh. this is something which is by default it should be there it should not be something which a tester needs to set up or tester needs to configure by himself this is uh, mm. I, I believe in complete uh, uh, onboarding people who are uh, very naive in nature he should be able to write test cases by default when the tool is being installed so this is something which i foresee in in a in in a codeless tool and should be available in going forward when when we talk about implementing such tools wonderful because you know like it, it just i just was just looking into this i've got some notes with me i've got more queries definitely because you know like uh so i'll just uh, tag my queries with this question what you said that okay uh, reporting Definitely reporting. This is one of the biggest pain area. I will tell you uh, any desk managers, any program managers to get that, that, okay, we would like to get a simplest report. Okay. And that mm -hmm. what has been tested and also onto the platform, like sometime today sending complex Excel sheet, sending the QC report and all this sometimes doesn't make sense. It might be mobile 
uh, they are in fact uh, capable like onto the mobile you can okay so the uh, okay so should the people uh, go ahead and answer this question when we talk yes please so yes so uh, what i was thinking like you know like on your uh, mm -hmm. this thing what you mentioned onto the previous slide if you can elaborate a little bit because i see the complexity of that that people within this they need to integrate those things with ci cd pipeline they have to do testing mm -hmm. onto the api they have to do testing of database mm -hmm. they have to do mm -hmm. also one of the thing i'm just very the in fact uh, what you can say like i have got biggest challenge can we use mobile testing using those tools like on the android on the ios then uh, can we integrate those kind of mobile testing uh, solutions along with this so how how do you uh, answer to that absolutely i feel uh, this is something which is already should be available whatever reports generate gets generated out of this particular tools should be able to send reports on whatsapp should send reports should be able to send report on slack uh, slack mechanisms uh, then you have teams that is becoming very normal nowadays after this pandemic so this is something which is becoming normal and every report should be able to be um, i would say a mobile responsive enough to understand that this is something which is uh, every manager should be kept updated about whenever there is an uh, a ci cd tool has been triggered the testing build and the report should directly go to that manager or the client or let's say the external or internal stakeholders so this is something which is important in aspect of how and what should be reported and this should be completely transparent when you talk about automation it should get automatically triggered off from the tool itself from the jenkins or ci cd pipelines i would say wonderful because yep, if you that, see that this is definitely bringing on a bringing giving giving us a solution just what we thought about five to seven days of the uh, what you can scope within that hmm. no matter what you do you can never be able to automate with so much integrations so much of uh, the in fact uh, functionalities and all this impossible so definitely yes okay wonderful is, let's go through this is this is uh, the report feature that definitely every every automation tool uh, tool should be able to pick up or let's say have those features upon so visual logs should be able to show where the test case has failed where the step by step logs would be able to refer to uh the integrations provided to the bug tracking tools should be able to successfully push the bugs on and uh, evidence as a part of testing i should be able to pro uh, produce evidence as a screenshot or a video capture should be able to uh, predict that this is where the test case has got failed and how we should uh, reproduce it so this is something which is very wow. straightforward and i believe so, predictive analysis of where the things are getting failed Yes, your no, your like thoughts on, on this? Sorry, interrupting you, because I don't know if you have covered something. I just have because you know when we talk about codeless test automation, okay. So if you see the generation of uh, the test automation, how it has moved from keyword. In fact, what you can say, like all the event keyword driven, then to codeless and all this. But now what we always talk with the customers and what customers are also looking forward is the integration of AI and ML within the testing tool. So when we because i am very interested on intelligent automation because for my customers and everything so mm -hmm. in these things how do you look because what i am looking forward that within those tools and everything we need to add in the intelligent component like if there are certain areas suppose there are five components on that onto the component number two and component number four there is a maximum defects mm -hmm. coming in okay so there are maximum okay. changes has happened so the automation tool should also tell us what are the defect prediction capability or, or defect prediction capability should be there saying that okay on those particular component you can test more in your regression so that you can find more defect or those are the areas there is no change has happened you don't have to run those test cases automatically those test cases will be kept aside from execution saving time can we do that because iml is an integral part of intelligent testing now and that's what i'm looking for wonderful that that gives us a very good idea of of solving a fundamental problem of testing so from my all learnings all this while of my experience in testing 
I believe uh, we could solve a problem of uh, pesticide paradox with this particular AI ML feature, which solves the understanding of uh, predicting something which is very much prone to error. Uh, any model that is very much uh, prone to error, finding more errors on, or let's say finding more bugs onto that, that particular module, exactly. this should solve this should solve basic problem of that testing. So yes, this is something which is very useful going forward. Absolutely. Uh, now I would like to take take up a small demo that uh, we are working upon, and I should demonstrate the tool that we we were talking about. And let's let's take a look at how the tool looks like and how it should going how it is going to help you in those automation sprint. So if you see this is the tool and if you want if you would like to create a test case how would it would look like now this is how a basic test case would look like is opening up a page verifying something on a website setting up something on in your test cases uh, sorry in your text boxes and set clicking on something so all of these interaction steps are directly available if you take a look at there is no specific or let's say there is no configuration required. There's no library that you need to pull in in order to automate something. This is very straightforward and you can definitely map it to your ma manual test cases, I would say. So if you see this, this is very engaging in terms of how you write test cases. Uh, over here, there's, there's one more column which allows you to take evidence by default if you take click this it will take a screenshot and it will present you in the report so this is very becomes handy in terms of reporting functionality and uh, by default it gives you a failure of the screenshots whenever there is a failure in your test case it will give you uh, a good screenshot now if you talk about reusable components so you have different methods that you can definitely import or let's say you can create your methods out of it so if i have to give you a live example of creating a test uh, method so let's say if I want to use these four steps again and again in my different test cases, I could go ahead and uh, select those and say create method. That would allow me to um, runtime uh, change some parameters. I would also like to add that here. So anytime I could go ahead and edit those things. And let's say if I have to call those four steps here, I just have to include one step known as call method. And I could go ahead and just select those and not just limited to this particular specific methods that you have just created in your main uh, test case file here. You can also create or let's say pull in the uh, test methods from different files that your entire team might have created. So any, any anything from there you can pull up and bring in the test case to be reusable anytime. So this is how you can do it as well as data driven if you want to drive your test cases through data you can also uh, run through the data that you might have in your excel sheet you can bring the data from various data sources like xml uh, json you can bring in from excel csv data various types of databases we are supporting uh, tons of database and if you see you have data over here which is which runs through different five different combinations over here so all of your combinations of uh, permutations and combinations of positive and negative scenarios covered in just one test case through different set of data here. So this, this becomes very handy in terms of how you write test cases and how you reuse those test cases to cover different. Uh, uh, obviously, this helps you in test coverage, enhancing those test coverage about how you write test case and complete those testing there. Um, the most important part is if you see uh, right now i'm just able to automate web a web test commands here now if i have to automate certain amount of apis or let's say i i do have my apis or let's say nowadays microservice architecture is coming into picture a lot right so you have different types of apis that you can automate here uh, you have rest web service soap web service uh, graphql that you can automate once you drag and drop here it is going to create allow you to create the request out of it and get the responses back and then validate those responses so obviously all of these things would come in handy while you are creating an end-to-end -end test case this talked about uh, you you have one test case which talks about 
uh, web, then you int integrated API test case here, uh, step here. And then if you have to add a database layer to it, you would be able to add a database layer after or in between any of the steps here. So anything and any sort of combination and combinations would be able to would be able to do it in this tool. Your thoughts, Tushar? How so how do you feel feel about no, this I'm approach? Here? Really excited. I'm just I just simple question because this is one of mm -hmm. the thing I was struggling and I was just trying to make on my customers' areas <clears throat> with this tool. With this mm -hmm. codeless technology, if I suppose I've got a 10 member testing, manual testing team, how much mm -hmm. training, how much time they have to spend to learn this tool so that in the next, can this team start automating by themselves without depending any other third party team or something to automate their test cases directly in the next five days? Absolutely. That's, that's the target audience that we are uh, uh, pitching our tool to. This is something which is very usable in terms of uh, people who are automating uh, or let's say people who are looking to move to automation from their manual uh, careers. So from my perspective, this is very ready plug and play tool, which anyone can be able to use with some sort of minimal training. Uh, I, I personally have trained a lot of my customers across this tool uh, uh, within three days of time. And after these three days, they would be able to understand the tool and a couple of days on how would you uh, getting familiar with the tool would be enough for me uh, for anyone who would like to uh, get their automation journey started. Wow. I hope that answers your question. Absolutely, because this can create a havoc in the this thing like, OK, we can enable so many manual testers across the industry who understand testing as a profession. Just imagine mm -hmm. you are changing their complete life through this particular tools. I mean the overall codeless architecture, codeless concept. Right. The, so that's that's the idea. That's mm. the idea. We discussed about empowerment, right, Dushar? Yeah. So personally, I have been through manual and automation journey, and I feel empowering these people would be the right uh, challenge for anyone who wants to try their automation hands-on. Mm. And this is something which we we should be proud of automating. Uh, giving them the tool to automate something. Wow. Wonderful. Then, I mean, I believe we are uh, through to the time for our uh, webinar here. Uh, I open this uh, conversation to everyone in the attendees. We should we we are throwing open the uh, for the Q and A session. Uh, everyone would be able to type their question, and we should be able to answer them. Here. That was an amazing session, you guys. We do have a lot of questions coming in. I have forwarded all the questions okay. that I'm getting to uh, Balbot. Uh, I'll meanwhile mm -hmm. also transfer it to Tushar. Yeah. Yes, there's a question coming in from uh, Mohabat uh, say, talking about, can you please demo the test result storage? So the test result uh, which is coming in would be stored as a as an HTML file would be able, you would be able to uh, send them to PDF formats as well as to, you can email them to your stakeholders, obviously. And you have everything like uh, CI CD tools. We have integration with Jenkins, Bamboo, Fogbugs, uh, Bamboo, and and uh, you have Azure DevOps also. So you would be able to trigger them through those particular platforms via plugins. So there's another uh, question coming in from uh, uh, Shiva Prasad, which talks about does the does this tool support all technologies? Uh, I would say yes uh, to 90% of of the technologies. We would be able to automate them through web. API as well as database and we are progressing on to desktop technologies also so you'd be able to automate each and every uh, each and every uh, functionalities or let's say create end-to-end -end test cases based on every aspect of testing that you do perfect um, there's another test uh, question coming in from Mohabat which talks about what are the options of integration with management tools like Jira yes it does come out of the box integration with Jira 
uh, with different test management tools like uh, test rail also so you have those integrations directly offered you can uh, put them and integrate and push those results back to the test management tool um, there's there's one more coming in question from shiv prasad accessibility testing i believe accessibility testing is something which you can definitely do with just one command with just one step and you will get a result in excel sheet or in your data table sections also so wonderful question there shiv prasad thank you for that um i believe there are coming of uh, questions like what is the back end for this you have uh, you have the question which is which talks about what is the back end for this so if i understand correctly so we have built this tool with the help of java and uh, different technologies over here which interacts with uh, different components of of the uh, automation uh, yes uh, if we want to recommend this to into our company yes definitely you can get in touch with uh, with us anytime we would be for we would be getting in touch with you uh soon after this webinar we'll be forwarding you the uh, video as well as the follow up questions or let's say any invitations that you might need to take up with us so obviously this would go ahead tushar your thoughts on any of the questions oh, this, this, see the i i what i'm excited with like suppose if if mm -hmm. there is a set of uh, experienced manual testing team is there okay mm -hmm. how do i give them an exposure to this particular tool how do they care how can they train themselves is there any option that they can train themselves and we can build a team and they can take it forward to their company saying that okay we are no longer you should not be silent it's a one team we can also automate that thing how can how can we give them the scope to learn this absolutely so anyone who wants to try their hands on with the tool you can get in touch with us uh, via any email info info at testing with testing hyphen with dot com is the email you can get in touch with us you can download the copy from the website you'll be able to uh, download it by yourself so uh, all all of these things can be done on available on our uh, with the name of testing is on youtube uh, you should be able to find some helpful videos onto that and start start their automation journey from there um there are a couple of things like uh, that i would definitely talk about is the support so if if you if any part of uh, uh, journey on your automation journey you think you need some help you can get in touch with us via our via our support desk as well as uh, we we have 24 by 7 support uh, in in the us as well as in india which you, you would be able to get in touch with us any time onto it as well as if you want to customize any sort of uh, uh, testing um, services with us we also deal with that sort of wis consulting services so you will be able to uh, you can give us all of your requirements and we we will be able to get or let's say set up all all of those testing uh, center of excellence for all of you in in your organization uh there are a lot more questions coming in obviously i cannot uh, go ahead and answer each and every uh, as we have time constraint but we will definitely get in touch with you all, along with this specific questions that you have asked and we can uh, forward you each specific uh, questions and answer this uh, along with this right so i believe there is couple of more minutes yes interesting questions are coming up uh, i feel there is uh, one question which talks about aiml which will it uh, needs additional license cost of rpa um, i would say there are couple of different uh, there are couple of different uh, um, what we say uh, approaches of rpa and the testing tool automation testing tool so we also have an rpa platform which you can definitely uh, leverage onto it uh we, we name it as automation ways you can go ahead and download that uh, personally and you should use that so that is one concept um there is one uh, one of our client which is 
already using is thank you netic for that uh, good feedback there so this is something which is uh, very useful for for us thank you netic for that brief feedback thank you pankaj thank you for every questions thank you everyone for uh, joining this session and uh, you have been a wonderful lovely audience to talk to and uh, for all of these question we will definitely get back to you with the with an answer and we will share you the uh, meeting recording to you thank you everyone thank you tushar and uh, thank, thank you for your wonderful you. time today to discuss this absolutely let's, let's let's uh, make a big change into the testing world you know like i really don't want because over the time over this 20 years i have got at least 250 to 300 people who used to be reporting to me in different countries and all this i really feel all these people will be really excited when you bring in that they can also automate just imagine they are yes. complete tester with this particular tool along with them so definitely thanks a lot for giving us those opportunities and it was wonderful to talk to you perfect thank you and namaste Thank you, Tushar. Bye. Thank you. Good day. So much, Tushar and Balbot, for hosting this amazing discussion today. It was uh, really very insightful. I'm sure everybody had a lot of questions to ask, a lot of interaction that was going in. So uh, I would again, once again, say thank you to you and the audience for being such, you know, a uh, supportive and uh, for being interactive. Uh, hope to meet you all very soon. Have a good day. Thank for you. All thank the you. questions. Bye. -bye. Uh, we'd like to take it forward and we'll mail it to you all the concerns that you have. Sure. Thank you, Vaidhi, for that wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you.